Welcome, everyone, to another Voices with Raveki. I'm here with uh, Gaia Orion, and I'm very excited about this because Gaia is a representative of uh, something I've been calling for, which is more and more uh, from the artistic community to get involved uh, with this uh, uh, this whole issue of the meaning crisis and waking up to it, waking up to it, and having people be able to respond to it in depth. Um, and so uh, Gaia reached out to me, and she said. Uh, I think there's intersection uh, between your work and mine, and I'd like to talk to you. And we met off camera and talked, and I said, uh, this is cool. Uh, could you please come on Voices with Raveki and share your work? And she agreed. And so uh, here you are, Gaia. Thank you so much for coming. And here I am. Thanks for inviting me, John. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you reached out to me, why you thought it might be good for you and I to talk? Yeah, it's been an interesting journey until this point. Um, for me, uh, I'm originally from Paris, France. I'm almost 50 now. When I was 21, I met uh, my husband, who is Canadian. So I moved to Canada around 24 years old. And it was a bit of a culture shock, uh, everything shock, because I was from a pretty conservative Catholic family in Paris. And I, I moved with this poet, kind of a lone wolf, nature lover guy in Canada. Right. And uh, we also had, I was just graduating from architecture, moved to Canada, and we had f three kids in 14 months. Whoa. So, <laughs> yeah. So my friends were key, were like still like partying in clubs and studying. And I was just like having this, you know, motherhood experience in the middle of nowhere when I was, you know, just le left Paris basically at 24. So um, I loved the guy I married, so that, that was never an issue. It was really hard on my system. I missed everyone. But there was something in me that knew that um, I was here to explore like areas that I have never been into in my life. So my husband was 40 years older. He studied psychology and philosophy, and he's done a ton of work on himself. He was nothing religious. So in a way, um, it just completely shifted my paradigm. And um, from this point, I just, you know, went into a completely different journey where I started meditation and a whole bunch of different practices like yoga and uh, really changed my diet, then living in nature, uh, quitting our job to just decide to, okay, what kind of life are we going to create? Becoming an artist, like all those things that I never had idea in my life that I would go to. But it's almost like this decision to, um, I want to make a life worth living. Mm. And always having kind of like this reflection every night about like, what did we do right? What could we do better? And then just, um, well, sorry, I got my son who lives in China, who is just calling me on Skype. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the everything, even like the fact that I'm an artist today is still kind of like a surprise for me, the way the road have taken me. Now, um, when I started like this journey, especially as in like uh, with my art, at first it was very solitary. It was just in my home in the forest with my family. And it's only when I decided to make a living from it. And I was like, where is my tribe? And that was about, let's say, 16, 20 years ago. And it was really difficult. Like it took me a long, long time to understand like where are my peers. So in the art world, it's still not there. But in the world of like change leaders, I recognize myself there mm -hmm. and I feel so it's almost like I have this feeling that without any pretension, that I'm a little bit ahead of myself. I don't know why we can discuss that today. I would love to hear your thought mm -hmm. about why the art world feels still so stuck in postmodernism mm. when you would think that historically the art is what's pulling yeah, culture sure. and society yeah. ahead. So that's been very frustrating to me. And then when I see like people like you who were you were ahead of your time, like in academia, 
bringing mindfulness studies, wisdom yeah. studies, consciousness, like all this whole um, uh, world of studies who is like kind of infiltrating society everywhere. Um, so I feel like there is a mirror in your experience and my experience. And so, and then, you know, I really enjoy like a lot of the talk that I've listened to, the people who have you as a guest or the people who, ha who you have as a guest. So that's why I reach out like, hey, you know what? I really feel, and I know you also come back from a really religious background and you had to like decondition you from that, yourself <laughs> from that. And that's, that's just a journey in itself. Yes. So this is why I contacted you. That's where I'm at. So let's take, uh, you know, some of these topics one at a time. Uh, first, what do, so you don't feel that your art is sort of fitting into the postmodern framework that still dominates uh, the artistic community. How would you describe your art? Uh, what is it doing? How like what do you what, what's the intent? How are you making use of materials like <clears throat> what's the difference because you're you yeah. i accept that, that i accept that you're ahead in some way and, and so could you articulate uh how does that show up in in your art and how does that and how does it respond to this your very personal struggle uh to you know come to a spiritual depth outside of the religious framework you were brought up in mm -hmm. so there's two questions there is like the question of how i i fit in in the collective and then the, my personal struggle and how it makes me fit yes <clears throat> and, and towards yeah. the first question what is it you what is it you are doing with your art that is not part mm -hmm. of the postmodern framework what is it you're doing uh and I, I assume it's not just nostalgia so what is it you're doing i think actually i came um this week this kind of like a bit i had this aha moment that um i find in my art like i appreciate art when it has a intemporal feeling mm. when it speaks about the time on when it was created yes. because that's inevitable because you grow in a context but it speaks of something that transcend time culture period ah, right so i think i fit in that and in the contemporary art world i think it started maybe with marcel luchon when um the art became um like you have like this history of art where artists and with the quest for wisdom was like linked together like yeah. from the antiquity and then something happened where and i think that's part of this um postmodernism and the scientific revolution where we just completely like erased anything spiritual god right wisdom right. etc and then like as artists, we left with a kind of art that is a, a very absurd, uh, devoid of <clears throat> beauty, of meaning, uh, of this transcendental mission. Um, everything like in the contemporary artists who are making it and it's, everything is just like, has to be giant. <laughs> so. Yes. In France, for example, um, they have like warehouses with public art that they've bought. They don't even know what to do with that stuff because it's literally crap and <laughs> they don't have room in the museum. And it's kind of like the state of our contemporary art is perfectly on schedule because it's representing the absurdity and everything that we've arrived to as a society. Like we've come to a point where we literally destroying like our environment, which is like a supportive, like we cannot, yeah. you know, eat dollar, dollar bill and the way it's going with climate change, like we won't even be able to grow food. <laughs> like what kind of mind like create that? So in a way, I feel like the art, the way it is now, like the context that I'm, what I'm seeing is, yeah, it makes sense. 
it's representative of this whole like consumption capitalism um very superficial world that we live in so in there there is like a whole new movement that is coming and it's a bit of there is a bit of the greenwashing i don't know if we can say like the mindfulness washing also but at least like we're trying and think there's something that is responding to this respond to the suffering that we're feeling like you know like in our personal life like when you just see the rate of suicide suicide and depression like you just need to look at that as an indicator of yeah. the states of our humanity so that's very powerful uh, so in some ways the modern art is exemplifying the meaning crisis uh, uh -huh. but that's not the same thing as responding to it um and i take it that you think the art shouldn't only be imminent it should also right be transcendent in some way how, what does that mean or, <clears throat> you know for you in your art how does how does because what i see in a lot of current postmodern inspired art is that the vacuum of the transcendent is all often filled with sort of a political statement of some kind mm -hmm. so right? true right and so politics yeah. is trying to control <clears throat> of religion and of course politics is directed towards the imminent and not the transcendent at least our current understanding of politics and so mm -hmm. it can't actually it can't actually take that function um so what like how do you try to convey that relationship between the imminent and the transcendent in your work so i don't think i try like i don't try anything okay and it's it just emerges Okay, and that's so what's does, really okay. beautiful. Like, I mean, if you think about anyone who writes, for example, poetry or music, yeah, they will tell you, you know, they woke up and the song were their, their mind. Or, yes, yes, yes. It yes. just it it descends like that's. <clears throat> well, that's why we call there was a muse. It's like a someone who's excellent an intermediary between yeah. like the yes. god realm yeah. and like i'm just this uh channel for this thing that has come through excellent. me like i really feel that i really feel that in my process okay that's fantastic so you you, you got excellent and that was a fantastic correction so mm. you actually feel like you're participating in this relationship between the imminent and the transcendent and you give like you give voice to it or whatever um mm -hmm. how did so let me change my question then because i think that correction is is brilliant thank you for mm -hmm. it how does the transcendent show up in your art well i think like i would get to go back and then ask like how does a transcendent show up in my life ah excellent please <laughs> this is excellent Be please. yeah because that's been my experience and that's where i also differ from my art community because a lot of artists will say, oh, I knew I was an artist as soon as I could hold the paintbrush. Like they felt, they feel like they were born with that. I didn't come with that at all. I liked drawing, but I wasn't the artist that was like really good in art class at school or that kind of thing in architecture. I didn't stand out for my skills, my artistic skills for like drawing a building and people around it with trees and so on. So <clears throat> for me, the art came from um, nourish, um, creating like a foundation that is just like daily discipline and dedication to my well-being. Right. And not just my well-being, like my well-being, like in relationship with the people who I live with, my place in the world, right. what so that... So this takes is kind of like a daily work. And then from that, it's the art that showed up. I right. started to do little sketches that became paintings. And then that had messages for me. It's like the art was ahead of time. And then once I showed it to the world, I realized that it had a place in I, you know, it took me a while to understand, like, actually what I've been working in my little uh, hermit life in the forest actually i've been massaged by what's happening out right. all around the globe yeah. Yeah. and then i'm ready to come out and it's like it has a voice that you know has a reason to be so it's 
really like a work of letting go of who I think I am and constantly constantly deconstructing this identity that I've received from, you know, birth, pre like utero. Yeah. <laughs> and the more I do that, the more it just expresses this most like magnificent, like, I, you know, I'm not like saying like, oh, I'm magnificent. No, I'm, saying the, okay. I'm saying the process is magnificent right. and what it brings in my personal life and around like just having this discussion with you today like yeah. i think this is just like a highlight you know the people that i work with that buy my painting that ask me to create a painting for them um people that are touched by what the painting is saying like all of that is just like the richness of the relationships and how it creates discussions like the art is always like um a conversation starter for like the most amazing discussion that if I wasn't that artist, maybe I would meet random people, maybe twice a year, I would have a really cool conversation with someone like that, where, you know, we just, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. where like the transcendental yeah. here and we just feel like this connection and we just, um, there is this kind of exaltation in the, this energy this happens like to me all the time because of the work, oh, like where I am today, you know? So it's, yeah, this, it's magnificent in itself. This is fascinating. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the art emerged, like the, uh, the art emerged for you. And this for me is not a negative term. This is a positive term. It's like a ritual. It's a, it's a, it's a practice that you, you do. Uh, it's part of the, your whole process of self-transformation and the art is just integral to that. And then, that but the art isn't just that the art is all the all the dialogos that emerges mm. around it that that is that is, that's exactly mm. that's exactly i mean you've articulated this way better than i could have but you, mm. so that what you've said and I'm, uh, the credit is yours but it, that was incohate in my mind that that's mm. the function that art should it should be emerging out of you know uh, uh you know ritual practice and, and it should be and it, it affording uh dialogos around it and uh, like that is a beautiful way of articulating mm. that Gaia. that is really mm. really good thank you for that mm -hmm. now the art because i have this spiritual practices you know i done like i do a lot of meditation and then for me like i love your term ecology of practices yes, because yes. meditation alone like <laughs> does nothing <laughs> yes yeah, like, that's right that's right right you know it, it has to have all the pieces and that's why i like like ken wilbur and his integral theory because yes. he's trying to like how do we look at the best of that exists today because we have access to all the different practices like worldwide yes you yes know, the whole history how do we grab the best of each of them and um compile them and use them for our um, flourishing in the most intelligent and and balanced way and that's just like a you know the work never stops but my art is um kind of a mirror of that process yes yes so what i see too is like the paintings i did 20 years ago maybe it was taking me 10 years before i could really get them right. like i would you know where the message of that woman that i drew was like oh my gosh like i was just like tears coming down my face just like i can't believe i drew that like she was just like way ahead of me you know like yeah. showing me where i was going and yes 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 but now that i've matured and understand my artistic process and understand my inner processes better from putting all that time and energy and just observing and being with it and working with it and having all those practices and discipline in my life i feel like now it's much more closer mm. like the painting i'm doing is like what is happening now right right with a little bit of you know, it, I think it's always a little bit of headers again because yeah. it's uh, smarter than I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. I, I wonder, did you bring any art 
to to talk about or to show any of your art in any way or if i while well, i have my uh flourishing woman behind oh excellent yeah, she's um well that's beautiful she encapsulates a lot of everything that um i am and i like to share like she has those deep roots she's grounded uh the energy rises through yeah. her whole body and then it just kind of explodes in this beautiful rainbow tree which is like how do we uh, reach down in our roots let it arise like emerge like oh, in yeah. a natural way and then express itself so it can be applied for like you know what is your talent and but there is also like she's really like firmly root rooted strong empowered yes. so for me like when i did this painting she invited me to like for a long time i was kind of like you know i was insecure and shy and being the artist you have to put yourself forward and you have to speak yeah, about yeah. yourself and i was still like not doing it 100 percent. i was kind of like yeah you know, i'm good at that but you know i'm just lucky and i was just like i was just like not 100 Hundred percent. So she helped me to be like, guy, I just I can do it. <laughs> like, you know, when, when you look at people who inspire me, like Martin Luther King, like have you ever seen him speak? Like his eyes, his whole being is just so passionate. Yeah. He is like hundred and fifty percent. And so that's what that woman, I think she's helping me or uh, transmit that. But another side of the coin with her messages is also how, um, uh, because after I had this um, uh, aha moment, was like, oh yes, and I was like doing this solo show in Paris, and she really helped me just like be this, like yeah, do my yeah. art, like be the artist, and be confident with it, and, uh, be confident with what I had to share, and the, what I, or the quality of what I was doing and all of that my role in the world but then a few years later i was uh, having another exhibition here near toronto and i was in a completely different state of mind i was just like emotionally i've been going through so much i was just like a complete mess and i arrived to the show opening and i was like oh my gosh i'm supposed to feel like that oh no i can't <laughs> So I go to give my speech at the show opening and she was like a version of her was on the poster. So she's part of the message. But I realized like at that moment, actually, she's also like completely like her arms are open. She's right. completely like vulnerable. Right. So this is also like what we called Robert, like, yeah, I'm empowered. But it's just like this is very vulnerable. And being an artist is like, I, you know, Please tell me if there is other uh, profession that ask you to be more vulnerable than that. Right, right. You know, so there, there. I'll talk to you. I talk to you a little bit about my art. No, no, that's yeah. so. I like this. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, an, there's an analogy for me. I, like you keep going back to your art and you keep seeing more that's in it. Mm -hmm. uh, this for me is like you know, uh, for me, uh, the works of Plato are like that. I read them. They transform me. I go out mm -hmm. into the world. I change. I come back and I see something in them that I hadn't seen before. And it, like I get this constant reciprocal opening. And this it's a perpetual fount of new sense making, new intelligibility for mm -hmm. me. And isn't it amazing when it's like, with, especially when it comes from an image that's as simple as this? Yes. Like, yes. you know, like a tree, like a woman with roots, like a million people have drawn that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And even recently this year, I've been working with this meditation teachers who's um, uh, teach it like yogic practices. So I've been working with the energies, which are like completely wild in my being at this moment. So now I see in her like how I have those colors that were just rising. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh, my gosh. Like, yeah, this is all everything's in there. Yeah, the, the, the writing it reminds me a bit of some like Kundalini paintings I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, so what does that I mean? what does that feel like I'll, I'll speak using your poetry but i think it's really good poetry what does it feel like when the muse is in you <laughs> if i could put it that way 
I, I know that's a tricky question, and, and but you know that I'm very open and I want to understand. I want to hear. I, 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 mm-hmm. Like, what is it like when? Yeah, and and you and you said for a long time the muse was even ahead of you, and you even mm-hmm. say muse is still smarter than you, and I I I, I completely understand all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would like you to, I'd like to give you a chance to articulate it more like, what's it like? What's the, what was the phenomenology like? What's it like in your mind? What's it like in your body when that, when the muse has come upon you? Um, there's a few things that come in my mind. So I'm going to try to organize my thoughts. Take your time. Be in silence yeah. for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you. All right, this is good. I love those questions. So um, I'll answer like how I would answer it before, and then I'll answer like how your question just like lit up something in me. Oh, okay, great. So how I would answer before had the muse come, um, I, I found that it came in like uh, about three different ways. Uh, very rarely, but it happens. It's in a dream, like I have a dream and the dream ah. is, a pa- is a painting. Right, 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 right. Um, it would also happen like as a flash, just like um, you know the um, tarot card of the tower with um, yeah. the lightning, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, the yeah. lightning, yeah. It's yeah. like a lightning yeah. strike, and the drawing. Like I have to do the drawing like right now because I got it. Like I remember once I was actually even driving on Highway Four Hundred, <laughs> and I was like. Holy God, I got to draw this. <laughs> and I'm just sketching it quickly because I don't want, you know, it's like if you have like this, yeah, uh, this idea of those series of words and you have to write them down. Now, if you don't get up and write them down, they'll be gone in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. kind of thing. But then there is other paintings who actually um, take a really long process. So it's more like a feeling. And I see something and it's like, oh sometimes it's a painting from another artist i'm like i love this i wish i drew that i wish i did that painting but you know it's i could not do that because that's him so i or her so anyway something in that painting just really caught my attention and then something in my life i want to put into a painting and i so i have all those little elements Mm, and mm. i collect like bits I have this giant folder which I call art in the womb and Ah. it has all my little like sketches ideas sometimes cutting of newspapers or flyers or things I find and then one day it's just ready Ah. and I take the, the pencil and I draw and then um actually maybe that would be interesting I, every artist is different how they work eh? i don't work with like blank canvas and i'm going to start and then the painting unfold when i do a sketch like when i have the sketch i know this is it i got it right and the final painting is like this hardly any changes from the original sketch uh-huh. i was just downloaded you know except i add the color and then the mastery of the technique and my style and all of that, but the um, the line drawing, like the the structure of the painting, is exactly like it is at, when it comes down. One thing that I started to do this past year, I never used to do that before. I now have a sketchbook beside my bed, and at night I don't do it every night, but I try to, and I've never done that in my life. But it's kind of a new practice I brought in. I sketch stuff. So mm. most of the pages is total crap. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. once in a while, there is like really amazing stuff yeah. that would have never existed if I didn't introduce that practice. Before I was just like, oh, I'll just wait when the muse talk to me. And now I'm like, I guess, inviting her more to just. And it's part of the work I've been doing with this teacher who is also an artist himself. So he really encourages me and the student to um, work with creativity and and draw. And for me, it's just like the most powerful thing that I've ever done in my life to put down my um, inner processes, you know, um, 
the exam the examination like what's happened in my meditation and then put it down and in painting i've been creating um, this whole series what i call study sketches so yes. i do little sketches and then when i, I when I, one is really good then i put it on i just do like a small little watercolor so i can do it in a few hours it's also like a price that is accessible for people and it allows me to just produce more ideas because those paintings like i paint in big and they take me sometimes two months to to finish or more so you know there's like for a long time i was really frustrated with that process because my work is very meticulous and i probably don't have to be that meticulous but i don't know why i work with like zero zero paintbrushes and the line has to be perfect and um so it's been very freeing to have this extra practice so this is how the muse happened in my life but now i'm going to answer it to like you're just waiting for that <laughs> no no i i liked hearing all that too mm -hmm. um you know how i said um <clears throat> how the art was like way ahead of me yes yes and now it's getting closer um like it brings you to the question of like what is the muse yes and what is it that i'm getting closer to yes yes and um that is making me feel very emotional actually oh. <laughs> at this moment don't don't suppress your emotions no yeah i'm not at all i feel comfortable with it um Good. it's like um like really beautiful <laughs> So, yeah, it's like I just wrote on the paper and I'm not, I, you will understand what I mean, but I just said, like, I'm getting closer. Like, when the ID came, I had to write it down, else I would have forgotten. But I, write, I wrote, I'm getting closer to me. And then I wrote, I am God. Ah, right. So, like, we are, I'm getting more to understand how like really understand it and not just know it because i've read it from a right. million times <laughs> right, right, right. that we are an expression of the mind of god like right. this human experience and the more we like let ourselves just be embraced and in the flow of that human experience then more like extraordinary and alive this experience becomes like yeah. at every small mundane level so i think there is something there which makes my art i think different than my postmodern colleague and many right. other yeah. artists that I see yeah. around me, but I do see other artists that work that way, where the art is actually like a process of awakening. Right. It's right. like right. a tool. It's a tool to uh, embody that knowledge. It's like a mirror. It um teaches me it takes me somewhere and it comes from <laughs> from the ocean of life like you know it's not like one point right when you understand how that works thank you that that was mm. cool is it is is part of it something like you 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 you're as you participate and really flow into that creativity you're you're participating in the creativity at the heart of being itself is it is it something like that that you feel like like you're you you made an identity claim but you but you're, you're not being a narcissist you're not saying i'm god and that like you're you're participating and you're you're conforming to, like there's something in you and there's some there's something within you and something without you and they're 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 interpenetrating in some way that's am, am i hearing you correctly am i am i getting it right like i'm trying to like what it like, yeah. you, like there's something like you obviously you, you i mean you're doing lots of stuff that's 
from a cognitive scientific point of view, you're generating insight and the flow state and right. And you're moving mm -hmm. into participatory knowing in a profound way. And, 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 and so that really drives, uh, you know, creativity and the, and you're in the being mode rather than the having mode. And then, yeah. and then that gives you some sense of the sacred, the divine, the God. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and, and so I'm trying to, I'm, and I know it's maybe uh, something that you might not want to do, but I'm trying to put some words on it for, right. To, to give people mm -hmm. access to your experience. Yeah. Is, is any of this landing what I'm talking about, or is any of it sounding right? Um, yeah. I almost want to say, instead of using the divine God and sacred, which I find, but I think it all comes down to feeling alive, alive, alive. Yeah. Yeah. So there, mm -hmm. you don't just mean biologically alive. You mean something more than that. Yeah. Right. But yeah, but also like I like when, you know, spirituality, the sacred, the divine is not so much of something that feels. It, the more you're in touch with it, the more you realize it's something very uh, simple. <laughs> Yes. So alive is just being alive in your senses. You're not like your your mind is alert and you're feeling what's happening and you're present. And it's like something that happens spontaneously. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, when you try to meditate <laughs> focusing oh, I, on the tip yeah, of your yeah, nose yeah, yeah, I get it's it. something much more um organic and um joyful <laughs> i mean it sounds very much like uh, aspects that i know from taoist practice mm -hmm. uh, where you are like yeah. the Taoist within and without and it's yeah mm -hmm. like it's simultaneously like marvelous and beautiful, but also the most simple. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, yes, that that exactly. That I get. Um, yeah. Now, but you have referred to your muse as a she a couple times. Uh, so is <laughs> okay. The so uh, that's because I'm French, and en français we say la muse. So ah. then I would go she, right? But yeah. okay, but that's that's fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. But it allows, at least affords me to ask the question, do you experience mm -hmm. the muse as something like a personality um, that that you can almost enter into dialogue with? Or what? I mean, not at all. Okay. <laughs> not okay. At all. So how do you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how do you experience mm -hmm. the muse? Oh, geez. That's... Yeah, because in antiquity, like a lot of the old paintings, the muse is always represented by this you know, beautiful yeah, lady, yeah, isn't yeah, she? Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where the she would come in too, right? Um, I think it's almost like a same question as asking like, oh, is God, how, is a man with a white beard? Don't you think right. so? Like when yes. we start to go in there, like we personify those, um, maybe is it a state? Mm. Because mm. I'm also trying to get at you had a strong sense for quite a while, and that's what brought emotion to you. The, mm -hmm. There used to be a distance between you and the muse, mm -hmm. and now they're closer. Mm -hmm. and I, so I'm trying to get at, like, yeah, what is it? Yeah, what is it? What's the nature of the relationship between you and the muse such that it can, at one time, be far and she can be ahead of you, and now mm -hmm. she's sort of more the cutting edge of you. Um, yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm trying to get at. That's what I'm trying to get at. I hope this is not intrusive, but I really want to. No, understand. I love it. I can yeah, really yeah. love it. I'm, I'm really was excited with talking to you because I can have conversations like that with someone <laughs> <laughs> that can, you know, um, encourage those thoughts that I, I have a lot by myself. <laughs> right. Um, Well, I'm going to look at myself, how I was when I felt like the muse was really far and she would just intervene by yes. chance only once in a while. And I, I would hardly get what she's talking about. And I would, 
I think I was in a state of mind that had much more like drama, confusion. Right. I didn't know. Um, like I cleared out a lot of my conditioning. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, I don't think you ever done. No. But I can really sense, you know, by the quality of my thoughts and my mind and my living that I've walked like a journey <laughs> to be where I am. And um, so when you have m less of this conditioning, which is like outside, like something that is like pattern that are so that are put on you by you know, mm. karma, family, society, religion. So when you kind of peel that away, what are you left with? Are we asking that question? I am. I'd, I'd like mm -hmm. to, yeah. Uh, and, and I'm not expecting you to give the final answer. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I just want to hear how you participate in the question. And then okay. I, I want to get, I want to get, uh, it feels like almost aspirational, your relationship between you and the muse. You, you, you just said like she, you you have to try and figure out what she's communicating to you, but you also feel like the di that you and her. I know this is tricky language. Yeah, it's all right. We're okay. Yeah, are, yeah. are are somehow becoming more at one with each other. Mm -hmm. um, but like it, it I, I, I'm trying to get. Well, let, let's try the reverse. Is the muse always with you now, or do you sometimes? Uh, uh, <laughs> right, uh, right. It's or, just feel like dissociation when you talk about it in that manner and yes, in a way it bothers it uh kind of like bothers me it just doesn't feel true so okay Do you understand? Yeah, yeah yeah so then mm -hmm. so i think it's dissociation was like part of myself like i think uh, i wasn't poor I, I had a lot of dissociation in my being so uh, i could not be in contact with that as ah. much I'm able to be in contact with that, you know, like right. in the sense of I am that. Right, right, right. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh -huh. So I get it. You don't like the language because the language is dissociational. And that's exactly what's sort of being overcome in mm. the process you're describing. Do I understand you correctly? Yeah, that was really well put. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's good. That's helpful. Mm. Uh, and so... Can I ask you this then? And I don't think this is dissociational. Do you think that this uh, that this relationship um, of 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 wholeness is also conducive to you living more wisely? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> because, <laughs> well, if you know, I'm sure you've defined wisdom with a lot of people in different talk, and I don't think we're going to be doing this today. But for me, I guess wisdom would be to be more in like when I was talking about being in the flow. Yes. And kind of like you also put yourself. And when I say yourself, it's like your constructed identity. Yeah. You kind of uh, put that out of the way. And yes. that takes a certain practice and work. Yeah. And Right, yeah. we're all yeah. agree on that. It's not like you can just like, all right, on the side. Um, and, and then um, life becomes more of a sort of. Um, all right, I'm really inspired by nature in my work. I live in nature, and yes. um, I've learned a lot from being in nature. To love is that what you said? I didn't quite hear you. To love. No, I said like I said like nature as a theme is very like present in my painting in my life. Yeah. And um, so I'm think that there is a, a wisdom. I would put that as a state of harmony, ah. like a harmonious, like with like the greater intelligence of nature. Right, I see. And yeah. somehow humans, humans, like this is like the original sin, sin um, story. Somehow, I don't know what fucked up in our construction, like in yeah. our species, but some 
thing is really, we're the only species in the universe, as far as I know it, who can destroy its environment and be so yeah. not in harmony. Does that harmony, so, with, does, it, does it also spill out into, uh, uh, you know, uh, that greater intelligence in harmonious relationship with other people? Uh, does, is it translate? Well, yeah, because um, people, um, you know, are really like, um, it took me years to really understand it. Like Krishna Krishnamurti speaks a lot about the mirror of relationships. Yes, yes. And uh, yes, yeah, so like you, you, when you're more at peace with yourself and all those parts of yourself, then inevitably it's going to translate it in more in a more harmonious way when you're <laughs> right talking with people even in, you know i'm not like um i had a difficult situation this year with someone um it was unpleasant but i never went into like confused rants and you know it was just very clear i knew what to say it was uncomfortable it wasn't nice for the person but it had to be said and and we had to part and it was too bad but this is just how it goes that kind of thing right in the past like you give me that situation even four years ago oh my gosh it would have been a drama for two years <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying like, oh, my life is perfect. I get it all. No, no, no. Ask, ask my husband and then he'll tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> but it's much better. It gets more harmonious, more, yeah, more in touch and more. Just, and like this, I think there's more wisdom in the interactions and in the way you lead your life too. Yes. Like this morning, I felt like crap. When I woke up, I didn't sleep well. Um, and... I love having a really strong coffee in the morning, but I know it's not like the most wholesome practice in my life, but it has come like those past few years, I'm going through menopause and it brought coffee, wine, and little things like that, that I, <laughs> yeah. it was good for me because kind of a way I was just like, so like, oh, it's such a good girl all the time. And I need to just like, oh, but this morning I decided like, I'm going to do something really wholesome with you. And I didn't want to take a coffee. I just had a good smoothie and took some good water. I, it sounds really completely okay. like ridiculous, no, 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 maybe no, to I mention that. But for me, it means a lot. Coffee is really addictive. I only have one in the morning, but yeah. I love my coffee moment. It's like, that's like a sacred moment, you know, like I yeah. love my really strong black coffee. So to let go of that is just to, um, <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous and funny, no, but it's, it was kind of like how I want to honor my being and my body and what I want to exchange with you. Like, I don't right. want to just grab my coffee because I'm feeling tired. I'm just going to be like present with exactly who I am without like putting a stimulant in my body. Does that make sense? Totally. And I didn't find it ridiculous at all. That mm -hmm. made great sense to me. Mm -hmm. So Gaia, like, we, like you've yeah. come, like, like I, I, I get a sense of this. Right, mm -hmm. like you you've become more of, of an integrated whole and mm -hmm. capable of seeing an integrated whole and also affording an integrated whole. I think that's very powerful, and for me, that's like Plato's notion of anagoge, just writ large. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and, and I'm asking a question of you that I still ask myself: What is the real like? How, what when you look back on your conservative Catholic? religious mm. you like what do you what, how do you see it now and uh, what's your relationship to um that religion do you think about it do you ignore it do you dislike it mm. um into some kind of reconciliation with it um because there's a lot of people in this corner of the internet that are post-religious in mm. some really important way and, and frequently many of them are re still wrestling with that question and i wondered what your reflections are upon it um i'm more at peace with it but i feel like even when you mention it to be completely honest i still have like a huge aversion right. toward it yeah and i know it's a piece i have to work on and when i even mean, like talk about it right now i can feel like this swell right. of right right emotion and stuff yeah. because it's just like with such a 
really nasty imprint. And, you know, and of course it gave me, you know, I was very mystical and I loved going to church. And at 20 years old, I was still telling my friend to come to catechism and I was getting them to do it right. because I found this cool priest who, who had great conversation. So I was like 100% into it. Right, right, right. But then when I started to like see, oh, it had such a, it was painful. Yes. Like the, the fear, the guilt, the yes. shame, the, geez, it was nasty. And it, it took me years and years and years just to like not be, and even like about what I just said about being the good girl and the fear of the devil and oh geez it's just like oh <laughs> okay so now you got it i just like telling you how i'm feeling about it. <laughs> right 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 yeah i try like to see the goodness in it because i know really good people who are very good very religious but still i don't care how good they are i think <laughs> yeah there is um like why even like people who like move past religion because i'm my art like really appeal to women who are like into sacred feminism and that yes. kind of thing and they love like reading books about mary magdalene she was actually the life of jesus the wife of jesus and so they're like giving trying to rewrite the story so that it's a better story that it was actually a good story but then the men in pre uh, beginning of Christianity, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. depress a woman. That's like for me, it's just like, oh, just like drop it. Like, who fucking cares about Jesus and the Bible? It's a bad book anyway. Like, there's so much more other like good um, literature that you can read to be inspired. I don't know. I get. I get frustrated with it still. So I no, <laughs> got no, a piece of, I, piece no, of work. No. I, I don't want any answer other than an honest mm -hmm. answer. And that was not only honest, it was heartfelt. And believe mm -hmm. me, I, I can identify <laughs> with what you're saying. I've been through that and, uh, you know, I did therapy for it. And, you know, and and, and it, I can still have those moments like you're, uh, like you're talking about. I, I get what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Um, and it's hard to convey to people who are still within a religious framework, how, well, how genuinely terrible that trauma can be. Mm. Uh, um, now, so I, I have found, you know, committed Christians who listen very deeply. And mm -hmm. Of really, course they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and of course, this is not limited to Christianity. I have same discussions with people coming out of Islam, coming out of Judaism, even coming out of Buddhism, right? They, like there's, mm -hmm. um, so, I, I completely get uh, where you're coming from. So this point you're at that, that you and I share, this mm -hmm. is like the pivot point of the meaning crisis. We, 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 many of us, we don't want to, we're not able to go into, you know, the legacy religions, but as your art shows, there is still this quest to, mm. Religio, bind the imminent and the transcendent together in a way that makes lives more wise and more alive, right? Mm -hmm. the, the abundant life that Jesus promised even, right? And, and so that, to me, that's what I'm really interested in, how people are negotiating that. And you see, like, I, 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 I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I don't want to. I'm just really, mm -hmm. really, you, I'm really interested in that, like, you know, no, I'm, I, I can't go back. But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean I'm just going to live a sort of secular, meaningless, materialistic kind of life. No, no, I want to bind the imminent and the transcendent. I want to feel more alive. I want to help other people to feel more alive. I want to, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to realize the whole, uh, all, uh, which is very, you know, and you've used the term spiritual. And I think uh, the, I, mm -hmm. I don't like that term, but we don't have a better term. I know. And that's so, what, yeah, we have a question. Well, that's why I think this, this time is so interesting because we like that's how we move forward like we yeah. create new dialogue new vocabulary yeah. new community new way of being yes. and new practices like yeah. uh let's take jesus since he was in the conversation you know 
like there was no Christianity for thousands of years before it existed. Yes, yeah. So now we're in 21st century with AI technology and so many things that are coming on board and that are stripping our humanity. Yes. Uh, um, we're in a danger <laughs> of losing a lot of our humanity in the way this technology is taking over. So what kind of practice, what do we create? Yes. To yes. remedy this, to help us be better humans. I think that's beautifully said. I think that's, mm -hmm. that's like, that's a good place to draw things to a close, but I'd like to give my, first of all, I want to thank you. As you can mm -hmm. see, sometimes I'm leaning in. This is so fascinating. I know. I love it when you do that. It's so yeah, very it's intimate. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's so rich and powerful. <laughs> Right and, and like and, and you're articulate and 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 it, we, we, there was genuine back and forth. I, I really, mm. really enjoyed that. But I'd like to give my guests the final word. It doesn't have to be a summation. It, it's just the final word. However you see it, whatever feels appropriate to you. What would you like to say? Well, there was one thing we haven't talked about, so I'll just put that as a final word um, because I. Um, you know, I lead workshops like not that often because I try to really focus on my career uh, and that's just so much work in itself. But I love leading workshops because I give the opportunity for anyone, mm -hmm. especially for people who think that they don't know how to draw. I can only draw a stick man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm terrified of drawing. And it's beautiful because they're saying like, I'm vulnerable. I don't know what I'm doing. And I love that. And what I'm saying is that this process that I've learned to be very intimate and familiar with the process of create the creative process through the medium of painting and drawing is very uh, easy. It's just a beautiful thing to, to transmit and for anyone to experience. And it blows my mind how the way we create, all of us, mirrors the way we live. Mm, mm, mm. And there is so much learning to do when we do such a simple practice, uh, so much learning to, to gain. When we do a simple practice, just as simple as just doing a little doodle on a piece of paper and then taking time to decode the symbol right. that was drawn on the paper. That's uh, my invitation. <laughs> well, please send me, if you have any information about any workshops you're planning, and I can put that in the description. You can send it to me at a future date and I can always mm -hmm. put video and put it in. Uh, but I, I, I'd love to afford you connecting to people who might want to take your workshops because I, I, I could, the, you definitely have something to teach. Mm. That's very, very. So perfect. why don't we do? Um, why don't we do? I don't know when you're going to be releasing that video, but I could offer a two-hour workshop. Just like do it. I never plan on doing it, but I'm just saying. Since the video is coming out, why don't we do that? We put a date for an invitation to experience sure. that. Sure. So what I could do is I could email you a couple of weeks before I release the video. Mm -hmm. uh, there's you're in a queue, unfortunately. I've, I've like I've got about. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's wonderful. Right, and then uh, and then and then we'll set up. Well, we'll make sure that that time is right, and then I'll put it into the notes for this video. So every everybody who's watching this, the video is out, and mm -hmm. that means be in by then. So that's how I we'll think do it would be great because then like the talk is great, but then it will also translate into practice and yeah. something that will be like a value for the you know the listener, something that they can really like. It can become lived experience. Oh, totally. The, the right. talk should always be in service of the practices. Always. And that's, that's what, uh, John, that's what I love about you. I was never, I mean, I like philosophy, but a lot of it feels a little bit like intellectual masturbation to yes. me when I listen yes. to it. Yeah. But what I like about you is that um, you really like look at how do we transmit this transfer this knowledge and the discursive 
into how do we lead our lives and yes. into practices yes. and like that's what like really got me like it really like stole my heart when i saw that you were doing that so well thank you so much thank you and and so I, let's make that happen for this video let's find a way of turning this talk into a way to you can lead people in practice i, I really want to make that happen awesome i love this i'm so happy really good we did exactly an hour this is so good <laughs> thank you so much Gaia.